Let's talk about finite geometric series. We can find the sum of a finite geometric series using our formula. We have S sub n equals A sub 1, which is our first term, times 1 minus R, which is our common ratio. So that means like if it's multiplying by 3, R would be 3. And if it's dividing by 2, R would be 1 half. R is that common ratio between your terms in a geometric sequence. And then n is the number of terms you're talking about. So this little n right here and this little n right here mean the same number. So if they ask you to find the sum of eight terms, that could be an eight, and you fill that one in as an eight. And then one minus r, which is your ratio at the bottom. So first term, one minus r to the n power over one minus r. Let's look at some examples. So they can write it a couple of different ways. Like they might just give you the information in a list. So number one and two give you the information that way. So if they gave us the first term, the r, and the n value, I know I'm finding the sum of n terms, which is 12. I can set that equal to my first term, which was 0.5. Then I have 1 minus r, which is 3 to the 12th power, because that n is the same as that n in my formula, all divided by 1 minus r, which is 3. But that's just without an exponent on the bottom. So then you calculate. Now I would recommend you calculate your numerator first. So you can type in 1 minus 3 to the 12th power in your calculator and hit enter. Get that number and divide by and put this in parentheses or just think about it in your head. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So you hit enter, you got that number. Divide by negative 2, enter again, you get that number. Then times negative, or excuse me, times 0.5, and then that would be your final answer, which I got was <clears throat> 132,600, no, 860. So you can practice with your calculator and see if you get the same thing that I did. Number two is another one that just lists out the information. So if we fill in S. We want the sum of five terms, because they gave us n equals five. Our first term is 2,401. We have one minus r, but it's a negative this time. When it's a negative, you want to wrap it up in some parentheses to keep it safe. And five is our exponent over one minus, and then negative one-seventh again. So since it's a negative, it's important with parentheses because if that was an even exponent, it's going to make that a positive. But the 5 won't since it's an odd power. But just in case, the negatives definitely need an extra set of parentheses. So when you're working these out, if you want to always put parentheses, then you don't forget when you should and when you shouldn't put them. So then I type this in, type your numerator, hit enter, type your denominator, but in your calculator, put that whole thing in parentheses and you wouldn't need this extra set but you'd want to type one minus, so it's a big minus sign, and then one minus negative one seventh would be a minus and a negative in the calculator. They're different buttons. All right, so I calculate all that and I got 2,101 for my sum of my first five terms. Let's look at number three and four. These just have a different notation. And so the sigma sign, this big sigma symbol, means the same thing as the big S, and 9 means that there are 9 terms that I'm adding together. So that's all that means. 5 is my first term. So this first number is your a sub 1. And the base of your exponent is your, ra is your common ratio. All right, so we put a sub 1 is 5. We have 1 minus 2 to the 5th power, or excuse me, to the ninth power, because we're talking about 9 terms over 1 minus 2. So we carefully calculate all that together and you should get 2,555. And number 4 works the same way as number 3. It had a big sigma symbol, but that just means the sum of my first 1 to 6 terms. So 6 terms was the number I needed. a sub 1 would be 2. My rate is negative excuse me, my ratio. So I need to put negative 3 to the 6th power. So you see in your calculator, that's going to make a difference because negative 3 to the 6th power is going to be a positive number. So 
if you don't put it in parentheses, you would have gotten the wrong number right there. And when I calculated everything, I got it out. My number I got out of the calculator was negative 364. So you could try these and see if you get what I get. You could rewind and try to try them all over again and see if you get what I get. So the 2 was a sub 1. The r, the common ratio, is negative 3. So let's look at two more 